Good afternoon. My name is Alessandro Cometta. I work for, for TICE in, in microscopy. And I would like to introduce uh, just a couple of minutes uh, uh, my company, and then uh, we go directly on <coughs> and microscopy. Um, the previous lecture is uh, really, really important because uh, it is uh, the basics for every uh, experiment. So, uh, and it is much more important uh, uh, when you work on the confocal, because on confocal, on the microscope, uh, on a standard fluorescence microscope, uh, you just have uh, two or three cubes. You just rotate the cubes uh, and you change the color. So for a biologist like me, uh, the first approach to a microscope is, OK, I want to see my GFP. My GFP is green. I look in the eyepiece. Ah, OK, this is my, my GFP. Uh, on a confocal, it's a little bit more complicated because uh, you have a lot of parameters to work. Uh, and this is the very uh, difference between a standard microscope because uh, you can uh, tweak and you can uh, screw every parameter and you can uh, uh, retrieve from the image, uh, from the sample, exactly uh, the, um, the picture uh, you want to have. This is uh, 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 a great advantage and the, this is a, a very great risk because uh, in a confocal microscopy uh, you can have the picture uh, you really dream, even if it's not the, the, the correct one. So you have to to work correctly to have a, a real picture and not uh, uh, a fake. <laughs> uh, so um, this is the first picture of, uh, of Zeiss. Uh, this is a, a shop uh, working for university uh, um, selling uh, uh, mediums, selling uh, uh, tools uh, and so on. It was uh, November 1846. And a uh, uh, third-year mechanics uh, was uh, opening this, uh, this shop and produced the first uh, uh, low-power microscope. This was the, uh, the, the symbol, the, the brand. And as you can see, are two lenses. And the same uh, meaning is still in the actual uh, brand. The first microscope was uh, very, very different from uh, the microscope you are used to work with uh, uh, today. This is a the first microscope, and interesting is that the, uh, the microscope is that part. Everything else is just a stand. Unfortunately, to produce uh, this kind of microscope uh, uh, was really, really uh, complicated. There was no theory. There is uh, just a trial and error process, and uh, uh, the idea is put together two lenses uh, and uh, more or less understand what is the best result. This means uh, a lot of time and uh, uh, is money consuming. So the microscope was not cheap enough uh, and was uh, complicated to produce. Uh, you can imagine for a, a German guy, uh, a mechanical German guy, able to uh, tweak everything and to, every, uh, to have uh, everything uh, exactly in the same way, was, was not possible. So he decided to work with a, a young uh, physics, a young professor in physics, and uh, he um, uh, worked on the problem and uh, defined the law of the uh, optics, the same law that we use today. From that point, Zeiss uh, uh, produced the first uh, apochromatic objective. Uh, the first uh, um, fluorescence uh, microscope, uh, even if at the time uh, the fluorescence was considered just a parasite uh, effect, a side effect, uh, not useful at all, but even uh, something to remove. And as you can see, um, well, I it, uh, the microscope uh, is more or less the same. Uh, there is something different here, and this is all the uh, producing uh, of the UV light. This is uh, a camera. Then uh, size produces also the first uh, phase contrast uh, of meiotic cells. And this is interesting because this is the microscope, the incubation, and this is the camera. Now it's the opposite. <laughs> 
Uh, then we had uh, the first confocal LSM, uh, the first confocal microscope uh, in Italy. And uh, as you can see, it's completely uh, different. And uh, uh, last year, uh, the, the last uh, um, product uh, is completely different from a microscope. So there are no more oculars, just the screens uh, and so on. Everything uh, is done uh, in an automated way. <laughs> so um, more or less, uh, uh, the step uh, was uh, the Professor Abbe theory of image formation, uh, the founding of uh, um, the, uh, the, the, the camp size uh, uh, founding, the foundation from uh, Ernst Abbe, and uh, uh, from 1981, uh, the sole owner of the Zeiss uh, is the, the foundation itself. Uh, it means uh, that uh, everything, uh, there is uh, no people uh, uh, living on the, uh, on the money, but everything is reinvested. Actually, Zeiss uh, reinvests 10% of uh, um, the, the income, so not uh, of uh, uh, the quantity of money invested. So not so many companies are able to do this kind of investment, Google and some others. Uh, coming on, on the light. Uh, I do a step before because the fluorescence uh, was added uh, as a secondary uh, step. The first one was uh, uh, looking on the, on the sample in just a transmission light, in, uh, just using the, the light of the sun. There is a mirror on the microscope and you just look your sample uh, using the, uh, the light of the sun. So there was, uh, first of all, uh, a try to uh, enhance uh, the contrast uh, using dye, using uh, different contrast, phase contrast, interferential contrast, Hoffman modulation, dark field, so using the light uh, in, a, in a different plane, or in polarized light. Uh, the fluorescence was added at the second step because uh, the contrast here is much more enhanced. So there is a dark background, and uh, you are able to um, uh, hit and see just uh, uh, the molecule you need. So you can use... Uh, a specific antibody, as told by Gabriele, uh, in the nucleon that uh, are going uh, inside the, the, the DNA, and so you can see just the DNA, or you can use a specific protein uh, to enhance uh, uh, the cytoskeleton or the mitochondria. Uh, this is the scheme of the microscope, is the same of before, so just transmitted light. On the uh, Fluorescence, the path is completely different, as told by, by the, um, Gabriele, but is on an upright one. Usually, when we are working on a light image, we are working on cells, and so the, the objective is not uh, over the sample, but us usually it's under the sample. So we are working on inverted microscope. Uh, the, the microscope we are using in the afternoon uh, are inverted. So this is the shape of the microscope. There is uh, the objective, the cubes, and usually you look in the eyepiece, there is a screen, uh, sorry, mirror, to look uh, from the bottom to the eye. And this is before you need to have a petri dish or something with some uh, medium inside. So the cells are adherent to the, uh, to the bottom, and the simplest way is just to look uh, from the bottom. Of course, you can uh, use uh, an upright microscope, uh, but if you use an upright microscope, you have a lot of medium. So, or you dip uh, your objective in your medium, and this is not so safe uh, uh, because you have a lot of, of contamination, you have to clean the objective every time. It is possible, but usually this is the preferred way. So as mm, told before, uh, this, the, the filter cube is just uh, opposite. So lens uh, and uh, excitation, filter, dichroic uh, mm, objective, and down to your eyepiece. 
If you are interested in this uh, technique, uh, um, just a look uh, on the campus. Uh, on the, uh, you, you just type in Google uh, Zeiss uh, campus, and this is the very first uh, um, entry. Uh, there is a lot of uh, information on the basic microscopy, from actually from the lamp to the super resolution microscopes. So if you just uh, need some information, you can go there. There are also some interesting tutorial, like as an example, this one. I can probably just work on that one. Let me check if it's yes I would like to, to open the exactly the same but I'm not sure I can do it yes okay this is the the, the web page and uh, there are some small flash tutorials where you can uh, work from transmitted light, so from here, through the sample, objective, and eyepiece, or cameras. Or you can go in epifluorescence, and in this case you can decide the tube, DAPI as an example, or GFP, where the light is coming, here there is a filter tube, excitation, down to the camera or the eyepiece. And so on. But just to have an idea of uh, how it is working uh, uh, a microscope. Uh, or um, um, this is a, a standard fluorescence uh, protein, a standard GFP. And as told by Gabriele, it is really important uh, to work uh, on, on the spectrum because uh, we are working on a excitation spectrum. So, as told by Gabriele, I can choose different wavelengths, so different lasers, and uh, it doesn't matter where I hit the, uh, my uh, dye, the emission will be exactly of the same color. Maybe it's different uh, the height, the intensity, but the, mm, your dye, if you decided to work on a GFP, it emits every time green uh, light. Uh, it doesn't matter if you hit uh, the light, you excite uh, uh, your diet with uh, UV light uh, or uh, uh, blue light or uh, cyan light. Mm -hmm. The emission will be the same. This is very important in every microscope because you can decide and combine different uh, fluorophore and you can also decide in that image to have uh, exactly the same uh, information exactly at the same time. Imagine you have a, a molecule uh, or a um, uh, vesicula um, moving very, very fast. You cannot wait uh, to acquire one image and then the other, but you have to acquire the same uh, image in two different colors at the same time. So this is, uh, as told by Gabriele, the same uh, uh, the emission spec excitation relaxing and then emission. And this means that uh, I have two different uh, spectrum, and this is the cubes uh, you are uh, working. So this is uh, a real diagram you can find uh, in every uh, brand. So you, you, if you use a size microscope, you can retrieve this uh, um, chart uh, on a web page of size. If you use uh, Leica, Olympus, Nikon, uh, this is very important because uh, uh, usually you have uh, three filters, uh, blue, red, and green. But uh, uh, sometimes uh, the green is not exactly the green you mean, or the red is not exactly the one, and so in one microscope you have some result, and in a different one you have some different. So just check uh, that the light uh, you are using to excite uh, your sample is uh, exactly uh, matching uh, the wavelength of your dye, uh, of your uh, dye. As an example, if you use uh, an Alexa 488, it is perfect because 488 is here, and you are hitting. If you are using uh, 
something a little bit more here or something more here, maybe the efficiency will be lower. If you want to check it, uh, every uh, brand have a web page and there is a, a filter assistant in your own language where you can check, you can just go there and say, okay, this is my protein, this is my dye, this is my filter set, excitation, dichroic emission, and it will be uh, printed on your screen, your dye, excitation, and emission, your excitation band, and your emission band. And so you can understand if the filter you're using is the correct one, or maybe you need to order a different filter, or just change the microscope where a different filter is present. Okay, going a little bit uh, uh, deeper in the difference between uh, fluorescence and uh, um, confocal microscope. What is the difference? The difference is the optical sectioning. What means optical sectioning? Optical sectioning means that uh, I would like to uh, acquire, to put my sample under a microscope, and I don't want to cut uh, physically my uh, sample, but I, I want just to acquire a small size, a small slice of my, uh, of my sample. So I want to, instead of acquiring everything, sir, I want just to acquire the um, slice that is in focus. What happens if I compare with a standard uh, wide field microscope? If my uh, specimen is a thick one, this is uh, the image that I have. So uh, I have the contribution of uh, the under focus at, and uh, the, the bottom and the, the lower plane. Uh, on a confocal, vice versa, I just have a small, small slice. The excitation will be the same because uh, I excite, uh, uh, as an example in, in the green, I excite uh, on, on the blue. The emission on the standard uh, uh, wide field microscope will be coming for the focal plane and from the uh, upper and lower planes. On the confocal, I try to filter and acquire just uh, one single pixel, just uh, one single point of uh, my, my sample. There is a lot of different uh, uh, possibility to um, reduce uh, this plane. One of the simplest way is uh, to remove it mathematically. So just acquire the image with a standard camera, standard microscope, and then use uh, structural light or the convolution, just a mathematical uh, approach, to uh, subtract from the data just the unwanted data. The confocal methods use uh, just a pinhole, so a physical uh, filter able to remove uh, the excess of light. And the best way from the excitation strategy is uh, to excite just uh, the information uh, I want to have. So, completely dark sample with the multiphoton, I can just uh, hit the information, the part of the sample I need. Here we are working uh, on, on the confocal method, so mainly on point scanner and line, and line scanner. This is uh, uh, the standard uh, um, approach of the uh, fluorescence, so a uh, source, in this case a laser, but can be a lamp, dichroic, excitation, sample, and back uh, with a different wavelength. On a confocal, there is just one single part different. A filter is a pinhole, just a metal plate with a small hole. This small hole is placed in the confocal plane, so in the secondary uh, focal plane, so exactly on the same uh, plane, in the conjugated plane of the, of the sample. And uh, this means uh, uh, that uh, if I reduce uh, the diameter, I can reduce the contribution of the uh, light coming f 
from the lower and from the higher part of your temple. This is the first uh, trick you can use. So you can uh, open the pinhole, get uh, a lot of light, and a lot of contribution from the lower and upper planes. Or you can decide to uh, lose a lot of light, but consider and acquire just the information from the focal plane. If I open completely the pinhole, the image I have is exactly the same as a, a conventional wide field uh, microscope, fluorescence microscope. Vice versa, I can try to close, 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 we will do in the afternoon, and your image change. There is uh, uh, much more noise, for sure, but the information are coming just from that plane. From biological point of view, it's a real advantage, because imagine you want to understand if your uh, protein, if your, uh, your uh, dyes are in the nuclei or outside. You just uh, cut a slice on a live cell, and you can see in the nuclei if your uh, uh, fluorophore are present or not. On a standard microscope, you cannot do it. However, I just have a point, because on the, from the pinhole, I filter everything but the point. So I need to acquire point by point a line and line by line to create the image. So the confocal usually is a very low, a very uh, slow instrument. The idea is to acquire plane by plane so line by line, plane by plane, then move the sample and acquire a secondary, a third, and so on, and acquire a stack of images to create a 3D volume made by different images. So if I acquire a, a sample, uh, in this case it's a very big sample, on a confocal microscope usually I just have uh, one single slice and everything else uh, is black. When I put all the images together, if I look on the standard uh, microscope, I have uh, also the out of focus information. On a confocal microscope, I just have a single slice. But I can instruct the software to uh, see a little bit more and to reconstruct a 3D to have everything in focus. You can even navigate, you can uh, rotate in, uh, in the space, and you can understand what is uh, upper and what is lower. So, on the confocal microscope, uh, I can work uh, on uh, different dyes uh, simultaneously, because I can have a lasers, a dichroic, the mission can go on a detection system. However, I can also have a secondary uh, beam splitter and acquire simultaneously two different wavelengths, blue and red, or red and green. This is very useful when uh, you, have, uh, you have a quick moving sample uh, where is, uh, you need exactly to know the colocalization of two different uh, proteins. Uh, how to separate the different wavelengths. There is a lot of different possibilities. The simplest way is to use a, a filter, so a red filter and a green filter. However, now the microscope, uh, the confocal microscope, can offer a spectral analysis. So you are not, more, uh, you are not anymore uh, bonded to the filter cubes you buy, to the filter you buy but you can freely decide on the spectrum. So this is the, the spectrum, and you can decide a band and say, OK, I want to acquire the green, but I want to uh, acquire also the yellow. I prefer to acquire, no, this is not correctly, because uh, I have a strange uh, um, dye that uh, emits not exactly on the, on the red, but is uh, between the red and the far red. And so you can tweak 
and work perfectly defining the band on, of your uh, interest. Uh, on the market there are different uh, approach, uh, more or less are the same uh, in, in different brands. Uh, you can uh, acquire the image simultaneously, so every information is uh, going on a different uh, detector at the same time, or I can do a sequential scan. So I can acquire, instead of acquiring the, the blue, the red, uh, and the green, simultaneously, you acquire first one, then the second, then the third, and so on. There is uh, virtually no limit uh, over the, the number of uh, uh, acquisition. The limit uh, is uh, um, usually your sample, because after one image, the sample is okay. After two, a little bit less. After 200, maybe uh, you have completely lost uh, your sample due to the, the bleaching. So you have to understand uh, how to, to work on, on the sample. Uh, in this case, uh, uh, these are the, the sequential ones, so I can acquire first one, then the second, then the third, and, and so on. Um, I will uh, uh, just introduce the, the simplest one. One of the simplest. Alessandro, just yes. because you were talking about this approach. Uh, with a simultaneous scan, are you still limited to the fact that uh, you have the very same voltage for the detectors? And they have yes. no function of the intensity that you're collecting from the hyperspectral line. Uh, yes and because no. Because this could be a motivation for moving to the sequential scan. Yes. Yeah. Yes and no because uh, um, actually the same voltage is here. Uh, here you are not limited to the same voltage. Keeping the same voltage and and keeping the same efficiency means that every uh, channel can be compared with the other one. But you, you are free to move uh, uh, the other two. Or what you can do is uh, um, keep, uh, um, as uh, this kind of detection have a very high uh, uh, number of uh, uh, dynamics. Uh, so the, the steps you can do uh, in the gray level are very, very high. Usually, we're speaking about 24 bits. Uh, it is enough for... Uh, yeah, but then you also have to take care about the spectral response of your detector that is not flat, it's quasi flat. No, it's not so... can can be compensated. Usually on every microscope size uh, from the uh, 800 to the 880 or to the old uh, 510 are compensated. So uh, it is n not anymore a, a problem. Can be on the old 510 there was a um, sensitivity problem on on the red because the multispectral uh, was a little bit less sensitive at the standard PMT. Now it is the opposite, so no, it is yeah. not, not anymore. Uh, so I I want to go here because it is the much easier to understand. I can uh, I can use a variable dichroic. So instead of using just a, a filter uh, produced to separate uh, at a certain uh, wavelength, I decide to use uh, something flexible. So uh, a filter able to separate at a different wavelength. It depends how it's moved, and I can select to cut at uh, 600, 500, 510, uh, 480, or, or so. So in a few words, what I can do is uh, uh, decide to put the, to send uh, the, the blue in one direction and the yellow in, in a different one. Um, for every one of this information, it is very, very important uh, the uh, light collection efficiency. So it means uh, that uh, um, the most important part of uh, your experiment uh, will be the objective. Usually, you are working on a, a slide. There is a cover slip. And 
you have a lens. What is the best way to acquire images? Of course, to keep the lens much closer possible to uh, your, your sample and keep uh, this angle as, as big as possible. Uh, why? Because uh, the quality and the quantity of the light uh, will be very different. Uh, if you go on the tutorial, uh, you, you can see also, you can understand uh, also the difference between the immersion medium uh, and, and not. Uh, just to simplify, I want to um, uh, remember what told uh, uh, Professor Abbe, so that the resolution is the lambda and the angle. This means uh, if this is the angle, and I look into my, my sample, imagine I have a, a point emitting light passing through uh, your objective, and then I see what happens from the other part. Here I have uh, my uh, original sample. Here there is a lens, and this is what happens from the other side. There is a distortion. There is a, a function able to describe this. It doesn't matter which lens. It can be my, my, my eyes, can be the best microscope in the world. There is still a distortion. And this is uh, the, the reason of the resolution. So when uh, two points are so close that I cannot de detect anymore, this is the limit of my, uh, my sample. How can correlate uh, the objective, the numerical aperture, and uh, the resolution? This is what happens if I use uh, a 63x with uh, oil. This is the object and this is the image, and this is the angle. If I reduce uh, the numerical aperture, it means I go on a 40x, as an example. The angle will be uh, a little bit uh, lower, and the image uh, a little bit better. Mo if I go on a 10, 20x uh, air objective, even worse. 10 or 20x, I cannot uh, understand any more than two objects. 5x or worse. If I go on a that direction, and this is the reason we are working on a confocal, it is even worse because uh, it is related to a square. So this is uh, 1, 1.2, 0, 0.9, 0, 0.65, 0, 0.3 on x, y, and this is on z. If you don't use uh, a very good optics, you are not able to distinguish between uh, this part and this part. This means that if uh, from this point to this point we are thinking about 1 micron, 0 0.5 micron, from this part to this part, we are thinking about 5, 10 microns. So here, we have a cell. Here, we have less than a nuclei. So in this case, we can detect if something is inside the nuclei, over or under. <coughs> in this case, not. Uh, there is also a tutorial you, you can check. And if you move the numerical aperture, you can see what happens to the uh, to your uh, um, dice. What happens if we have uh, more than one uh, uh, die? Um, I will d um, just uh, show as uh, we, we go in later on the on the microscope. Uh, I will just. Uh, um, show you some uh, screenshot of the um, 
of the software so you can understand uh, what I'm doing. This is the software we are uh, uh, working with uh, downstairs. There is a, a button here, Smart Setup, where I can uh, define two guys. Uh, the software asks me, okay, which kind of guy uh, do you want to work with? I say, okay, I want to work with GFP and uh, Meter Tracker Orange. The software offers me three different solutions, actually two, a fastest and a best signal. In the fastest, uh, he acquires simultaneously the green and the red. In the best signal, it acquires before one and then the other. What is the difference? The difference is here. If I acquire simultaneously, the tail of my first die will enter in the second one. And so I have uh, some information that are wrong. I make some mistakes. Can be not so big, but can, can be an issue. Imagine this is a very, very bright signal and this is a very, very low signal. In this case, uh, the tail of this uh, part, so that one, can be much higher than the complete red signal. Uh, I will uh, come later to understand how to prevent. Uh, so I can choose between a lot of uh, information, then I say apply, and the software is able to uh, tune all the other parameters, just to give you an information, give you an image to work with. This is a very uh, useful because you get an image, but pay attention because the software is a kind of autopilot. Uh, it will bring you on your destination, but you don't know the way. So uh, it is very, very important because if you use the so the, a confocal or a microscope in this way, uh, you are not able to uh, understand exactly what you are doing. So. Starting from here, then go on, on the parameter. Uh, coming back on the um, uh, problem of uh, many uh, dyes on your sample. Imagine I would like to extract uh, five or more dyes uh, from my uh, sample. There are uh, uh, people able to do with uh, five, six, seven, eight, actually 11. Uh, in a perfect world, what happens is just uh, to have a nuclei on the first channel, cytoplasma on the second channel, Golgi on the third, uh, um, vesicles on the fourth channel, and so on. In the real world, uh, it's not exactly so. Even if there are people able to design with a bacteria on a petri dish, but uh, uh, there are some, some trouble to, to understand. I come back on the spectrum. I told you that it's very important. We, have, we are here to dice. Now you know that uh, 488 means that uh, the excitation is here, and Alexa 456 uh, is uh, the maximum here. What am I if I use a laser line to excite in that region. I excite uh, my Alexa 488 at a 20%. Uh, here, more or less, I have no excitation. So the answer for my sample is that band, that green band, sent red uh, here at uh, five, uh, 520. So green, a very nice green. What happened if I switch on also the second uh, line. The second uh, dies will emit, uh, and I have uh, a beautiful uh, red emission. However, here I have uh, the tail of my first die. It doesn't matter for what I, I do here, because if I want to acquire this information, I have to acquire also the green channel. 
Why? Because it is not green, it is red. This is blue, this is cyan, this is green, this is yellow, and this is yellow-orange. So there is nothing I can do. I cannot filter. There is no physical filter able to separate this light from this light. We are speaking of yellow light. How can I overcome this problem? I can acquire in two different time frames. So I can uh, switch on the first one. So I switch on uh, the blue light and acquire on the green, point by point. Then I switch off the first, I switch on the second, so I switch on the green light and I acquire on the red one, and I can separate the, the sample. Or some system are able to do it so quickly that for the sample is in different time, but for you will be at the same time. So switching line by line, first line, second line, first line, second line. Red, green, red, green, red, green, red, green, red, green. For you, you see on the screen and you see the two images coming up. For the sample, there are milliseconds or microseconds, so it is a, a lot of time. You remember the, the fluorescence uh, response will be nanosecond or picosecond. So in this case, uh, this is... Uh, what I have in, in the result, a clear red, a clear green, a clear red, and there is no uh, overlap of the two systems. Okay, there is some overlapping here, but it's a physical one. I can also do something different because, because I can, uh, I'm not restricted uh, to here, but I can enlarge and have a, a much more efficient system, keeping also the 10% or 20% or 30% of the, the light. This is true for uh, every confocal meter. Um, <coughs> this can, can help because uh, we are speaking of uh, uh, detection, so of a physical device that uh, is able to acquire some light. So we are acquiring photons. Sometimes uh, the photons are so low that uh, uh, we are talking about uh, 10, 20, 40 photons, even less. And we have to use this information to get uh, an image. So uh, there are two, two strategies. You can uh, wait for a lot of time, and so you put your laser on your uh, point, on your uh, sample, you wait for enough time, and then you close the shutter, exactly as uh, the, the old uh, pictures. You open the, the shutter, you wait, and then you close. Or you can amplify the light. So there are several uh, electronic methods to uh, amplify the light. One of that are the photomultiplier tubes, the PMT, actually the detection system we use in every confocal, where you can increase the voltage and you can multiply the, the photon. Uh, there are different, uh, a lot of different detection system, more or less uh, 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 photomultiplier tubes is something with a, a window or some uh, some device uh, uh, behind that are able to reflect the light in a, some way that every time so will be double the number of uh, electrons. Uh, the sensitivity is typically very low because we are speaking about uh, 20, 30, 40. Some cameras are able to arrive to 90%. So what, what do you, we can do to, to work in this way? Uh, 
The idea is to reduce as much as possible the noise and try to increase uh, the, the light. This is how it's done a photomultiplier tube, so there's a window, then the light is converting electrons, and then every time the electron is reflecting, is uh, doubled. So one photon here, two, three, four, five, 20, 40, and, and more. So I can uh, detect, I can control this process by increasing the voltage. This is the, the gain, the gain on the camera, the gain on the PMT, the gain on the confocal. However, I also increase the, the noise. And this can be a problem. So uh, the idea is uh, uh, if I need to have uh, from the bottom, from the, the dark signal, to have uh, a signal of my molecules, my, my sample, I can uh, increase uh, the time or I can increase the gain or I can increase the laser. Uh, how I can manage with these three points? There is no rule. Uh, I can just uh, give you some suggestion. This is the same sample. I have the same with me, so the sample with me, so we can, uh, we can work with. Here there is a lot of gain with a very low laser power. Uh, there is uh, almost uh, no signal, there is uh, a lot of, of noise coming from the sample, and you can see here. Or I, I can uh, keep the gain uh, one half of before and increase the lasers 30 times. In this case, uh, the, the background will be much lower and the signal will be higher. The drawback of this approach is that much more laser power means that I have much more chance to uh, destroy my sample. So again, a balance between the time you want to spend and the ability of your sample to support uh, your, your laser. Again, uh, if uh, looking on your eyepiece, uh, you can see exactly what you expect from your sample, okay, that's fine. Sometimes uh, I have an overamplification of uh, my uh, sample, and here will be show much better. And I have not only the information of uh, my sample, but also everything else. In this case, the only possibility is to uh, recreate uh, uh, the sample, to relabel the sample. If I work on, on the system, what I can do is uh, uh, try to work with the offset and the, the, um, the, the gain. So, this is a uh, lower, blue it means uh, underexposed and red is overexposed. So what I can do in this case is uh, try to keep the sample inside this area. So keep uh, as low as possible the blue and as high as possible the, the red. Try to have just one pixel blue and one pixel red. So in this case is uh, there is a wrong offset. In this case, uh, the gain is too high. The, the better one is here because uh, I have just uh, some point uh, overexposed and just the, the background where there is nothing that is blue. Here the offset is too high, here the offset is okay. So I have just to, in theory, I should have just one single blue pixel. If you have question on the sample, 
Okay, still five minutes. I want to um, uh, show you uh, one of the advantage that we have uh, on the system uh, down here. It's a kind of uh, super solution. It's, a, it's called Ariscan. It's a different way to work on uh, uh, with the pinhole. The system we have downstairs is, uh, this is the scanning head. Instead of uh, acquiring the sample, going to the pinhole and going inside the spectral detection, I can select a different uh, detection system where the pinhole uh, is, is open. This means that uh, you have uh, much more light, but as we know, this means that uh, uh, you reduce uh, the capability of uh, optical sectioning. In this case, uh, what Tars uh, uh, is doing is acquire all the information. So, as you remember, if I close the pinhole or I open the pinhole, I have the contribution of the lower and higher plane. What happens uh, if I close the pinhole to my image? I simply throw away a lot of information. I just throw away all the information that, in theory, I don't need. It. So, I'm a very good engineer. I can uh, focus uh, my excitation light, and I can keep uh, one micron but of the spot. But my molecule is much, much thinner. On a standard confocal, what I do is I'm trying to retrieve all the information coming from that uh, area. Uh, Alberto and the other physicians are able, the physicists, sorry, are able to work uh, sometimes with uh, um, samples that uh, are not so, um, um, are bleaching not so quickly, and so are able to reduce the pinot a lot uh, to improve uh, the resolution. What Ariscan is doing uh, is just uh, acquiring not one, not two, but 32 different information. So this is the information uh, we have uh, from the emission. This is the information we can collect with a confocal. This is what I can do to improve the resolution, and this is what uh, some systems are able to do. The idea is to reconstruct uh, this information by adding, uh, in a correct way, the information coming from the sample. So we are maximizing, maximizing the light. The result, uh, this is a standard confocal, and this is uh, the same sample acquired on uh, on a um, on air scan system. Um, what about if you perform image processing on your confocal? Uh, I've tried. Uh, this is uh, um, I acquired. Uh, um, I closed the pinhole to 0 0.6, and I put uh, some deconvolution with a 4x average. 8x average and a scan. I can increase the. Sorry. I can enlarge the image. This is the Aries scan. This is a confocal uh, uh, 4x average plus the convolution and uh, 8 uh, plus the convolution. As you can see, is in between. It's much more similar to the 8x than the first. Because uh, the signals, uh, you can mean the signal coming from 32 points. So at the end, it's, it is uh, much better. Last but not least, uh, uh, you are free to define how to use this information. So at the end, uh, you have uh, a lot uh, of information. Instead of reconstruct of, on just uh, one single point, uh, you can, this is uh, new from this year, uh, you can reconstruct uh, over four different lines. So at the end, what happens is that uh, 
instead of acquiring just one single pixel, you can acquire four different pixels. The exposition time is the same, the laser is the same, but of course the speed is much higher because you are working in parallel. And the idea is to acquire the sample not pixel by pixel, but four pixel by four pixel, increasing the speed, but keeping the same uh, exposition time. This is just a, or you can decide, so you can stretch, you can stretch and go to the super solution, you can stretch and go to the high speed, or you can define uh, what you want, so sorry. So and this change in the outcome is just software based? Yeah. There are also some, oh, yeah. uh, to some lenses. Some, so, some lenses. Okay. This is a standard confocal, this is a iris scan. This is a standard uh, acquisition, and this is uh, done with the uh, fast mode. I can code, uh, as you can see here, there is much more point. You can, uh, in this case, uh, I have much more speed. If I time code the, the projection, there are, the intensity is higher and the, uh, the spots are more. And uh, I've done also a, a comparison between uh, resonance scanner. So I can increase uh, the speed of the scanner in, in some system, or I can go parallel. If I increase uh, the speed of the sample, it means of the scanner, it means that the, the exposition time is slower. So the ratio between uh, the uh, signal and the noise uh, will be much, much lower. So I have much more noise. In this case, not because the exposition time is exactly the same. I, I'm just working in parallel. And last image. Sorry. <coughs> I hope. Uh, oh, okay, because this is a comparison between the same system. I hope uh, I explained you something interesting so i hope uh, that you have a uh, will have a lot of uh, question uh, now or later and in a few minutes uh, there is a coffee break okay.